Tonight on Q2, forced to the streets. The stress, the poor animals, you know, it just sucks. Two Billings women now homeless and living out of their car after emergency rental funds disappear. And now they're looking for help for their pets. Plus, to the governor's desk. The Youth Health Protection Act is designed to protect children from the imposition of chemical and surgical procedures. A controversial transgender bill has passed. We'll tell you how it will impact Montana and honoring our heroes. We'll take you to the ceremony as Montana's Vietnam veterans reflect on their sacrifices. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. New numbers just into us tonight for the Billings Police Department breaking down crime in 2022. It's eye-opening news on the stat that everyone pays attention to as murders doubled last year. But the story doesn't end there. Our David J breaks it down and explains why some of the data is actually surprising. Billings Police Department annual report came out. There's a lot to it. You don't have to go very far to find out about that statistic that people want to know about most. According to the report, drug offenses are the lowest in 10 years. After peaking at more than 1,900 in 2018, the numbers dropped to fewer than 1,000 last year. Still, at the end of 2022, the Attorney General talked about the severity of the drug problem. Drugs, and especially fentanyl, are causing a crisis in Montana that's resulting in a major crime problem. We are seeing violent crime across all categories continue to spike in Montana. Other parts of the report show there were 17 homicides committed in 2022, including 12 classified as criminal homicides. That number is double the amount Billings saw in 2021 when police investigated nine total homicides. There was a decrease from the 2020 record high of 22, but it was still triple the trend we saw from 2013 to 2019. The number of robberies in Billings increased for the third straight year to a 10-year high of 159 in 2022. That's a 50% jump since 2019. And it hints at what police have been saying about increased weapons crimes being their biggest challenge right now. Overall, weapons offenses actually went down from 165 in 2021 to 127 last year, which could show Billings Police Department's focus on the issue. But that number is still more than twice as high as the previous eight-year trend. Most violent crimes did decrease in Billings from 2021 to 2022, including drug crimes. 954 drug crimes reported, the lowest in Billings in 10 years. Police Chief Rich St. John will have more context on these numbers at a news conference on Thursday. In Billings, David J, MTN News. The shooting at a Nashville, Tennessee elementary school is just the latest here in America. But even after the deaths of three young children, Congress is showing little appetite for breaking the impasse over gun control. Today, House Democrats called for Congress to put people over politics. Ed Markey and Alyssa Slotkin introduced a bill to fund research into the causes of gun violence, even hearing from school shooting survivors. Even before the tragedy in Nashville, polls showed most Americans are dissatisfied with the nation's gun laws. The Nashville school shooting is the 13th so far this year alone. Today, the Montana legislature passed a bill to ban gender-affirming procedures for children. Senate Bill 99 will prohibit hormone treatment and gender-affirming surgeries for those younger than 18. But with many of those services not even currently offered in Montana, what's the true impact behind the bill? Our Charlie Kleps dives deeper into the debate and has the answer. The only hospital that will be affected by some of those changes is the Billings Clinic, which offers hormone treatment to some of its patients. But the bill will have a major impact on the transgender community in Montana for years to come. I came out at 17 as trans and I changed my name. Quinn Wolf will be the first to tell you that becoming trans isn't easy. He's among the many that have struggled to make their transition. I didn't get to medically transition until literally the start of this year. The current process requires recommendations from a psychiatrist or proof that a person suffers from gender dysphoria, a process Wolf wishes was shorter. You have to have that diagnosis. You have to go through other people to get what you need. Senator, please open on your bill. And heavily debated legislation now passed by lawmakers in Helena will make the already difficult process nearly impossible for Montanans under the age of 18. The Youth Health Protection Act is designed to protect children from the imposition of chemical and surgical procedures 
for the purpose of causing the child to phys physically appear more like a person of the opposite sex. Republican John Fuller from Kalispell is the bill's author. He and other proponents of a ban on gender-affirming treatment and surgeries say the legislation is meant to protect children from making dangerous decisions that they may later regret. Children live under the guidance and guardianship of adults precisely because they lack the maturity to make safe and responsible decisions for themselves. Many of the biological effects, for instance, of testosterone and hormone therapy cannot be reversed. But many who have experienced those changes feel very differently. Wolf believes far more harm is caused when kids aren't allowed to fully embrace who they are. It makes me worried. I'm worried about these kids. I'm worried about these people not being able to have this, this help that they need to actually be themselves. And he's hopeful that something will change so that others will have an easier road than he did. You don't have to agree on anything, on everything, to support your fellow humans. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. That bill, just one of hundreds of very serious issues that Montana lawmakers dive into on a daily basis. But today we also saw the sweeter side of the state legislature. The House State Administration Committee was jam-packed today with fourth graders from Vaughn lobbying to have Montana take a definitive stance on huckleberries. Montana doesn't currently have a state fruit, so the students worked with Representative Lola Sheldon Galloway on House Bill 880 is they look to make huckleberry the state fruit. Each student presented testimony and delivered some very compelling arguments. Grizzly bears depend on huckleberries as a critical food source to fatten up before winter hibernation. The grizzly bears also are a state animal. Huckleberries are high in antioxidants, which helps protect the body from the effects of high blood sugar, including kidney damage, poor tissue healing, and a diabetic condition that involves the growth of abnormal blood vessels in the retina. Well, the committee unanimously voted to send the bill to the floor, and members noted just how impressed they were with those kids. Hundreds of families in Billings are confronting a rude reality as they've now been forced out on the street. As we've reported, the Montana Emergency Rental Assistance Program is coming to an end. It provides funds to allow low-income families to live in hotels for several months. Tonight, our Phil Van Pelt continues to cover this story with a look at the impact not only on families, but on their pets. I caught up with two of those people that were forced from Billings Hotels and are now living in their car. Not only are they stuck looking for housing, but to make a tough situation even worse, now they're trying to find a place for their pets as well. And this is home sweet home at the moment. Um, cold, you got to turn the car off and on throughout the night just to stay warm. That's just part of Alicia Shin and Molly Thayer's new routine. This car doubles as their home after they were unexpectedly tossed out of their temporary housing at a Motel 6 on Tuesday, where they'd been living for the past several months. We get a knock on our door yesterday and they gave us an hour to get out. I was on my way to work. I couldn't even go to work yesterday. They've been living in hotels since November, thanks in part to funds awarded to hotels for people just like them through the Montana Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Although they say the program oftentimes didn't work the way it was intended, as they were still charged for the room. I've sold clothes, I've sold jewelry, I've sold my gun collection, my coin collection. <laughs> I've, I have nothing else to give. Now they don't have a room to call home. And on top of that, they have no place for their furry family members. It was one of the hardest things I had to do was say goodbye to her yesterday. You know, they don't really understand what's going on. Alicia and Molly are among the many now scrambling to figure out what to do with their animals. Fortunately, they were able to connect with the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter, who took in their dog and cat temporarily. In very, very rare circumstances, we are able to take in animals on like a really emer uh, emergency, short term uh, basis like overnight. Director Gabby Fry sympathizes with those in this situation, but says unfortunately there's little shelters can do to help the many pet owners now confronting evictions and billings. She said the shelter is contracted to take in strays brought in by animal control and surrenders, meaning there's simply not enough room. We see the need. We, we understand this is a need that our community and most communities have is this safety net fostering, um, and it's something that we are trying to put together, um, but it's, it's in the works, but we're not there yet. In the meantime, Molly and Alicia are grateful that their pets are safe for now, but know there are many challenges ahead. Just two of the estimated 1,600 residents who are or will soon be facing evictions. All we want is a place, a permanent place to call home. 
That's all. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. Well, it seems like lately we've had two different kinds of days, cool days and cool and wet days. So today, well, we didn't have any additional moisture recorded at the Billings Airport, but the showers are starting to move back in for tomorrow. 17 for the coolest reading, 32 turned out to be the warmest reading at the airport today, which is our typical overnight low. We're already ahead for the month and the year as far as precipitation, and we're a little ahead, about six inches above what we would typically be as far as snowfall goes. Across the state today, we were looking at readings into the 20s across the northern tier of the state, 30s, 40s elsewhere, a little bit warmer, as we look over into northwest Montana, but cooler and wetter air is arriving. We're going to talk about it with the forecast details. The Vietnam War ended nearly 50 years ago, and today veterans from the war were honored with a special ceremony at the Yellowstone National Cemetery. Today is Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day, a day to recognize a group of veterans who didn't always get a warm welcome when they returned home. In a celebration filled with taps and a 21-gun salute, Vietnam vets were honored with a lapel pin for their sacrifices and for survivors like Ray Southworth, who didn't always feel the love when he returned. This day means a great deal. Soldiers that came back were in tough shape, man. I mean, you know, it was lack of leadership. Uh, I mean, they weren't treated real well. You know, it was it was terrible towards that end of the end of the. It's for my country, and uh, I felt that, as all young men do, you know, we feel for our country and we want to defend it. Well, in Helena today, hundreds gathered with Governor Greg Gianforte at the state capitol to honor all those who served. State lawmakers also read out the names of Montanans killed serving in Vietnam. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2. One Montana mom sounding the alarm when it comes to kids and mental health. We'll tell you why the fight is so personal. And in sports, forever a champion, this Golden Bear is stepping down fresh off a state championship. We'll tell you why in just a bit.